We're here to keep you updated on everything gaming. And today we are talking about Resident Evil 8, the demo uh, for the game that will come out on May 7th. Uh, I am Alex and I am joined by Lou. Hello. And Michelle. Hello. And uh, we're about to talk about a franchise that is uh, near and dear to our uh, hearts, uh, you know, in, in, in a matter of speaking. Uh, we have, uh, we're quite familiar with the franchise uh some more than others but uh let's start with uh with with you guys uh tell me like what was the first resident evil game uh you played the first one came out uh was it 96 i believe it was 95 or 96 and uh, from playstation one and uh it, it's safe to say that it changed gaming since then survival horror was, was only like, like it wasn't that popular of a genre but uh the re first resident evil really kicked uh kicked it off and, uh, and yeah, uh, let me know, D did either of you play one of the originals for PlayStation or what, what was the first time you stepped into the foray? I I'm going to go first, wish. Oh, I'm gonna go first go. because this is going to be short and sweet. <laughs> what you mentioned was the first and only Resident Evil game I played, which was also I played uh, on the PlayStation 1 in 1996. Um, I remember my friend was trying to get a copy of it. And uh, we couldn't find it. It was sold out everywhere. So we went downtown, Chinatown, got ourselves a, uh, <laughs> a copy, you know. Sorry. but for... I've been there. Is, is, is it in the mall? With yes. The glass, absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. Yes, yes, I've been there. Oh, yep, man. That's, that's where we were, try we were trying to get games. We allow ones. If, you know, we had enough money, we buy the proper game because, you know, it's the right thing to do. But at that time, we wanted to buy it. It was sold out and we had no other choice. So we just got ourselves a copy from Chinatown. Uh, I remember really loving that game. And that's why I got into the movies is because of the game, that game. And yeah, that's my experience with Resident Evil. And now that I tried the demo, I'm like, huh, I kind of want to go backwards now and play some more. I wish I'd played the first couple when they actually came out but uh I would have been five and traumatized so that's not a thing for me um the first one I played I truthfully don't remember um it was one of the remasters um I I I, I don't I literally don't know since playing like whatever remaster that was I've played all of them in sequential order now and I've enjoyed them all immensely um for me like my love of Resident Evil I don't have as much nostalgia for it. So for me, like the one I love the most is actually Seven Biohazard. It plays the most like the games I enjoy. Um, it is a little bit more shooter feeling to me. Um, and that that is like my wheelhouse and that's where I really thrive. So that's why for this one in particular, Eight slash Village as the title is, um, that's like, it's my game. I'm so excited for it. I'm like, I can't, I can't stop thinking about it. And I'm really happy it's not too long that we have to wait for it. Um, at least right now, it doesn't feel like that long. So yeah, played all the Resident Evil. I'm a fan, but I'm more into the more recent ones. Cool. Uh, I did play the original around 96, 97. Uh, I, I do remember that uh, I saw a friend playing it and I'm like, ooh, I got to give this a shot. And uh and coming off the Super Nintendo slash Nintendo era, it was like when you rented a game, it was possible to beat it over the weekend, dedicating like a modest, modest amount of hours. So yeah. that's what I thought. I was like, hey, this All Resident weekend. Evil game. Yeah, yeah, this Resident Evil game, I'll, 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 I'll you know, just polish it off over the, the course of a weekend. Uh, but you know what? I didn't even get the opportunity to because I put it in and it asked for a memory card. And I'm like, what the hell is a memory card? <laughs> what is this and then it was a whole ordeal but i ended up buying it uh at a flea market for like 20 bucks the actual original when the the playstation uh, uh cart uh the boxes were actually long they were really oddly shaped and um and yeah i i fell in love ever since uh played part one part two i remember i got that christmas uh in 1998 uh part three Got that in Chinatown, uh, a la Lou. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, since then, like Resident Evil 4, I bought a GameCube just for that game. Little did I know it came out for PS2, for 
yeah, you know, just a few months later. And just kept at it, all, like, almost all the games. The, the, the really weird ones I stayed away from, like uh, Operation Raccoon City and uh, <laughs> I think Gun, Gun Survivor is another one. But, uh, but yeah, and, and yeah, th- th- now we came back, uh, the part seven, a return to the mansion setting. I, I, it, like it sold me on that. I'm like, oh, they're going back to their roots. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, I was really excited for it. And, uh, this Resident Evil village demo, it brought, like, it's going back to the Resident Evil four roots. And like, to me, it's like, that was, that one's my favorite. I'll, I'm going to love this one. Uh, and speaking of the demo, let's talk about what everyone thought. So hands up if you were able to clear it on your first playthrough in under half an hour. I warned you though, so you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I, yeah. I, I got that. I, I got the text, and, and you, you, you were all like, "Oh, it's only half an hour. You, you got to re up." Like, ooh, okay. So, so I just like I ran everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well. I, I guess in this group, I played it first. So I knew there was a half an hour time limit, but also the way I play Resident Evil is very slow and very methodical. I like to find all of the little things. So that was how I was playing the demo. And I knew there was a time limit, but in my brain, I'm like, there's no way it's been half an hour. Um, so I did not finish it in my first playthrough. But luckily, if you have uh, you know friends or multiple PlayStation accounts, you can just log into your other accounts and play more. So that's what I did. I actually played it three times. <laughs> um, so the first time, I didn't beat it. The second time I beat it in nine minutes. (laughs) Um, So that was just, I flew through up to the point where I had got cut off for time. So then I could like take my time for the little bit. I was so close to being done though. Like I I had maybe five minutes of gameplay that got cut off in my first playthrough. So like, you know, it's fun. I played it three times. I would have played it more if I had more accounts or more friends who would log in for me. (laughs) So yeah, I liked it. I basically just, was sort of uh i didn't finish by the way um because i just kind of looked at everything like every inch i was like "Ooh, what's this because like (laughs) i said it's my first resident evil game since 96 that's a long time so i was like "Mm, what's this 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 doesn't remind me of anything oh what's this oh church okay i'll go there oh what's this huh shotgun Mm, okay so (laughs) everything until i realized like oh my god there's a timer i got five minutes and then i started to like power through the game but i pretty much the time ended as i was supposed as i was going upstairs oh right on that was where my game ended at the first playthrough as well like right then (laughs) also just we're gonna throw it out there spoilers if you haven't played the demo if you obviously haven't played the game we're gonna talk about it a lot so spoilers (laughs) sorry for those who need the warning (laughs) spoilers (laughs) <laughs> there's Sorry. enough stairs spoiler there's enough stairs in a church oh my god <laughs> the stupid key i couldn't find the stupid key <laughs> that, yeah how, how did you uh how did you two react to the the lichen when when they popped up i assume they popped up in your playthrough yeah. okay and how did you deal with them okay so i didn't know what i was expecting right like i actually had headphones on and i was just kind of actually scared because i didn't know what to expect what was going on and i got nervous like i was in the exorcist or something because that's what i was thinking because the the sound the eeriness that's what got me and then sort of when the first lichen popped up i'm like ah okay now i felt (laughs) kind of better than i'm not dealing with ghosts (laughs) dealing with a canine Bam, bam, I had a bam. similar like, right. similar reaction of like I thought it was gonna be the scarecrow that came for me and like that was freaking me out every time I like went into the little house and then popped my head out I was like is the scarecrow still there is it still there and then it was still there because it, it wasn't an enemy so by the time the lichen showed up I'm like oh good it's not the scarecrow I, I got this like that I can handle um I just I murdered them like it gives you a shotgun right before and at this point i'd been wasting my time finding so many materials i'd already crafted bullets so i was just like ready to fight at that point that by the way that 3d pulse headset i got it because apparently like the the new tech for uh the ps5 was uh on there and it felt like there was these things happening around me so while i was playing i was like what is that 
<laughs> during the first round until that. the lichens came and i was like all right i i got a bit more focused after that but before that i was just like 3d sound amazing you were thankful for enemies that could kill you basically it's like, oh yeah. okay here's something <laughs> this i could deal with <laughs> yeah I, I mean it, it was weird for me because i killed one of them and the other one just sort of uh backed away it's like eh, i'm not dealing with this and, and just took off did you guys have the same thing where the second lichen, lichen just left i killed the second lichen i, okay. I didn't kill the first one okay the first one i ran away and then <laughs> circled back and then oh. this it was there but this the, the second one appeared and i was just able to like shoot it like a okay. lot of times before it died. I killed two in my first playthrough. Mm-hmm. And then my second playthrough, I killed none. Because I was just like, just run! Oh. And <laughs> it's possible to do that. And then in... No, yeah. And then in my third playthrough, I killed two again. But then I jumped over the other side of the fence. And if you go to the left of like the little like track, they get aggressive. Like They came over the fence at me. So that oh. was actually the only alarming moment of the playthrough because like at first I'd already killed, like I killed them, I ran by them and then they came at me in the third playthrough and I was like, oh, don't do that, please. Because <laughs> I didn't waste so much time <laughs> collecting a bunch of bullets and stuff. So I didn't feel quite as like capable in that moment. It was fine. <laughs> Obviously I didn't die or anything, but yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to not kill the first enemies I see. In general, <laughs> I typically try not to kill the enemies because I like to like, I hoard, I hoard stuff in these games. Yeah. I don't want to waste bullets. None of that. But in the demo, I'm like, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna <laughs> like, I'm gonna see how how it plays and what it feels like and that sort of thing. So, right. Yeah. So, so to me, uh, the scariest part was the the tall grass and like hearing the enemies. The music's changing. Uh, there's a lot of tension and and like I'm slowly going uh, into the grass and then running back into the house and pushing the bookshelf for no reason and then or, all right they're not breaking in so <laughs> and then going back out finally encountering the enemy uh that to me felt like uh, the most tense moment uh how about uh you two did, did like, what did you feel was uh, the scariest most, most tense moment of the demo every everything until the the lichen showed up that that old lady is creepy <laughs> as shit <laughs> they did a good job yes. yes she reminds me of a bad guy in outlast three um anyone who ever played that there's this like tall grim reaper looking thing but it has a very similar like presence and tone of voice and that thing's terrifying in that game so i kind of got like flashbacks to that i would say actually the scariest thing for me was actually when the house is on fire and the dude's coming at you because i wasn't confident if it was fully a cutscene or not so i'm like firing off bullets oh. like mad i'm like why is he not going down what is happening and then he tackles you and i'm like oh it's a cutscene so the next time I did it, I just shot one bullet at him and then I was like, okay, hey, it's fine. Just like take me down. <laughs> so, but that the first playthrough with that was, a, I thought that was a really good sequence. Cause just like the coming at me in a hallway, I don't like yeah. that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so w- with part eight, uh, like you could see that they're adding lichens to the game. And uh, in contrast to part seven, where I, I forgot what the uh, the common enemies were called, uh, Michelle, do you remember the, the the tall gangly creatures that I I don't remember what they were called, but they were like I call them blob monsters because they're just yeah. like that was kind of their their vibe. They turn into goop. Fair, fair, oh. fair. The, yeah, yeah. The, the the glob monsters. So so part part seven had an amazing atmosphere, amazing setting in the mansion. Uh, like mm-hmm. to, to me, the, the problem started once you left the mansion and you, you went into the, the caverns and it's very familiar if you played other uh, Resident Evil games that usually end up in caverns and then end up in like an umbrella facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it was very familiar. But uh, the other issue I had was the, uh, the enemy types. Like there wasn't a lot of variety. It was just like blob creature after blob creature. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the family members were really cool because that, that changed, uh, changed it up a lot. But they, they mm-hmm. felt more like boss fights. Which yeah, is they really were cool. boss fights, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I get that impression from the Dimitrescu family members. Like the like, they don't look like they're going to be common enemies. They look like they're going to be like uh, coming after you, which is fantastic. Uh, but hold on, and, yeah. and so, so 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 I'm just saying in terms of expectations for part eight, 
I I feel just from the demo and from the trailers that there is going to be enemy variety, what was lacking in Part 7, and the atmosphere and location, it's going to be like uh, an improvement from Part 7 uh, in, in that it, like it's all going to feel like have this, uh, you know, terrific feeling, like the, this terrifying feeling, I should say. Uh, how about you, Michelle? I interrupted you. Please. Uh, no, no, uh, I was just going to say, like, based on all of my research, because I've watched um, at the point of filming this, there has been a lot more gameplay content released um, for those of you watching. So there is a lot more <laughs> out there, which leads me to like different theories. Um, but before we get there, I will say the thing that I'm loving is like the gothic horror elements to it. Um, I really loved Seven Biohazard, but it did, it was constrained by the atmosphere where it was like all taking place in the bayou and it was like this hillbilly family. And like, that is scary, but there's something to like the grand nature of the gothic horror, like the castle, the village, the like lady who I think is a witch and like, these kind of more mythical creatures, even though obviously it's Resident Evil, we know it's like a, a, a virus and, and that's still yeah. a thing, I'm sure. But the way it's presenting feels like these grand, like creatures of, of legend. And I'm so into that. There's something about that that just like really works for me. So my hope is a variety of enemy type. And then my theory is that we'll see other mythic creatures. Like we know there's vampires, we know there's lichens, and my theory extends past those two groups. I think there's more than that, hopefully. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lou, as someone who hasn't played since part one, uh, you, like I, I'm, I'm sure like you're, you're kind of in the dark of like what to expect, but like w just based on the demo, what uh, do you think you're gonna see in the game? Uh, like Michelle was saying, like, the, the maybe the classic monsters will show up i love the atmosphere uh i think i remember when uh, michelle and kelly were doing like the a ps5 thing when the ps5 was uh was demoed or sorry was was announced kind of and they were showing off some games and uh i saw the trailer for resident evil and it actually caught my eye right away just like that the the cinematic aspect of, of the trailer it was like okay this looks kind of cool so no expectations, uh, but from the demo itself, I really enjoyed it. So I hope to just keep continuing on with the game. I pre-ordered it, so no one's editing our stuff soon. <laughs> 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 All right, and um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I already mentioned the expectations, but uh, it, it, it is interesting that it, they're moving away from zombies and into this more like it, it's it's kind of like you you know how like japanese culture is like vastly different from from you know north american ones and and it's like hey what scares people in north america and, and like the japanese like wild well, halloween stuff werewolves <laughs> vampires and, and like i'm gonna be honest with you like like a witch i i i, I it does have like a feeling of a witch so how how is this gonna work out with like the virus uh you, you know the t-virus deal like are we going to see zombies again uh like what is happening there, there, there's, there's like a lot of questions capcom is keeping us in the dark uh on a lot of things so that's what uh brings us to our predictions and our tinfoily hat time uh on a lot of things um michelle please k kick it off okay so the thing I am dying to talk about, and there's a little bit of this in the trailer, so it's not like super duper spoily, but we see more information in the released gameplay, is we have four heads of house. So we've already been introduced to everyone's favorite vampire girlfriend. Um, her name's Al Alcina, Alcinia uh, Dimitrescu. So she is the head of the Dimitrescu household. There are three other households. So we have Heisenberg, Moreau, and Ben Viento. We know Heisenberg, we've seen that dude. Um, he's the one with the hammer and he is potentially like the leader of the Lycans is what it looks like based on um, some of the trailers, some of the gameplay. He maybe also transforms into a massive werewolf dude because we've seen a massive werewolf dude with a hammer. We've seen Heisenberg with a hammer. That's, that's one thing. Then we have Moreau. So when they showed the four households. Each household had an emblem. The Moreau household's emblem was a mermaid. 
Yeah, yeah. I know. Super oh, weird. Oh, my lord. <laughs> I don't oh, think wow. it's mermaids specifically. Okay. That I'm going to say. But there's also in one of, I can't remember if it's one of the gameplays or one of the trailers, they show a map. And the Moreau family um, is in charge of the reservoir. In the reservoir, we see this nasty fish creature, which also shows up in one of the trailers. So <laughs> that. Then we have oh. the Benviento family, who we have just in the newer release gameplay footage got to see the head of household. And their emblem is a sun and moon. I'm not honestly super confident, but I think that could be the witch household because Ooh. like witches, paganism, they worship the sun and the moon. Da, 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 da. And like, I, this is, it, you're going to see it. it. It's maybe a little spoily, but like the head of household is a puppet master. And it's got this freaky, nasty Annabelle looking thing that talks to Ethan. Whoa. There's a, a cut scene of that. It's freaky nasty. You're going to see pictures of this thing everywhere. Not like we're seeing Lady Dimitrescu, not in like that way, but like this thing people are already talking about. I've seen so many pictures of it online and it just got released in the past couple of days. So I think vampires, lichens, fish people, <laughs> and witches in one of the cutscenes as well. Lady Dimitrescu refers to her three daughters as witches. And one of the mm. actresses who did the mocap for one of those daughters actually unfortunately passed away. And on Twitter, one of the game developers posted about that saying that she played one of the witches. So confirmed, the three daughters are witches. So th that's Whoa. why that's I make think- it even more creepy. Yeah, right? yeah. They're, I love those three daughter characters. They remind me of Marguerite from Biohazard because she was the one who could turn into bugs. And these ladies also turn into bugs. Ooh. So it's similar in that sense. And that makes me curious of like the similarities in the virus because like that's a pretty notable power to have in one game and the other. Like the swarm of bugs is just crazy. So there's that. Then we do see a lot of Lady uh, Dimitrescu doing her thing. And she works like, um, oh God, that big old silver dude, the tyrant. Mr. X. And yeah, yes, uh, she and works and to. plays like him. So he, she has that kind of annoying stalking feature in her gameplay. So there's mm -hmm. theories about that. I don't necessarily have a theory about that specifically, but that's what her gameplay looks like. And like, I've wow. seen a lot of footage of her just like slowly walking after Ethan and just like ducking in door frames. And there's something about that that freaks me out. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. She'll just like, he'll close the door. She'll open the door and she'll duck through the, the door frame. Like it, it's <laughs> with her little hat. She'll like turn her head sideways. And it's yeah. So um, almost exactly like Mr. X would. But, well, no, exactly like Mr. X would. He, he, he would just peek under doorways to come after you. Yeah. 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 So that's a huge yeah. thing then just to like circle back this is the second demo that's actually come out this demo was called the village demo prior to this there was a ps5 only demo called the maiden demo in that one you played a maiden like a, a girl and we're introduced really heavily to the dimitrescu family because they actually kill maidens and bottle them into wine that's what the vampires do so like vampires super confirmed at this point and we've also at this point seen Lady Dimitrescu drink Ethan's blood and say that it's stale. So like burn <laughs> on him. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's like all the tinfoil hat I have of there's gonna be some crazy, like there's already some crazy monsters and like there's there's a fish thing. Because the household, like the head of house Moreau looks nasty. He looks like a weird fish looking dude. So I'm curious if all the heads of household can shape shift. So he turns oh. into a fish looking thing and then she turns into some bat looking thing because we have seen gargoyles in the trailers. Well, in, in terms of, uh, <laughs> I love it, but it, in terms of like literary references, Moreau uh, comes from the, the, the novel name, the, the Island of Dr. Moreau in which yep. a mad scientist uh, experiments and creates uh, humanoid animals. The hybrids. The hybrids, yep. right. And uh, and, 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 and I see a little of that going on here. If, if you know, you, you're to believe like uh, the, the vampires are just like half bat creatures or like blood sucking creatures. Um, yeah. Lou, do you have anything uh, like, like, what are you thinking? About, okay. Like, it, it, I was just listening to Michelle and I feel like I, I'm really excited for the game now, but I feel like I am not going to put headphones on for this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
fair. fair. I am yeah. not putting headphones on for this game. <laughs> no. Probably should have. But I am, <laughs> like, I'm super excited for this game now. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, like, the, the one prediction I have, and now that you mentioned, like, Ethan Stale blood, I, I, I keep coming back to this. And, and, and this is the protagonist of Ethan Winters. Uh, like, it, when he was introduced in part seven, it was, uh, like, you can tell it was a shift away from these, like, superhero-like protagonists like Leon Kennedy and, and uh, Claire Redfield, Chris Redfield, Jill. Uh, how they, yeah, they seemed superhuman. They, they could do anything. They're untouchable. And, mm. uh, and, and now Ethan Winter is just like a common everyday man married to a woman uh, and, and, you know, just exploring the, the, the troubled family, <laughs> infected family, let's say. Yeah. And, and, and that was part seven. But, but now uh, here in eight in Village, um, we see Chris Redfield show up once again because uh, spoilers for part seven, he showed up at the end of, of Biohazard slash uh, seven, uh, like to aid uh, Ethan Winters. And now he's here again uh, in Village, sort of obsessed with Ethan Winters. He, you know, this is all trailers. I'm not spoiling anything Say in the it. game. Yep. Uh, Say yeah, it. He, he shoots Ethan's wife uh, in the head uh, or we're to believe he does. And uh, he's he's j- just clowning on him, just just absolutely dunking on Ethan, and uh, and Ethan's missing his daughter. I forgot his, his daughter's name, but Rosemary. Like, yeah, Rosemary, right? And Rosemary's and so baby. Tra- oh, there you go. Shit. <laughs> Very nice. Rosemary so, is a baby. <laughs> so so the tra- sorry the the trailer repeats Ethan's name over and over again. Ethan Winters. Ethan Winters. Characters in, in the game they know him by name. Uh, so like it leads you to believe that there's something going on with his identity and like what could it be is he somebody that we know from the franchise and and, like the only person I could think of is a person with like a similar ish name two syllable two syllable first name two syllable last name last name with a W one of the best characters in the franchise Albert Wesker our our trench coat wearing mafioso ish (laughs) so <laughs> Albert Wesker, he he died in one of the installments, but as we know, there have been clones and the, the TD virus, his blood is stale. Could that be the T virus? I don't know, but that is my tinfoil hat thing. I I think it could be Albert Wesker that's uh, mind wiped or, and you know, has amnesia or something. I... Michelle stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, okay, so I don't know if I fully agree, but you had mentioned this the other day, so I was like, I did a little deep dive, because I was like, I remember the name, and I don't remember fully the situation, and the thing that I came upon, because there's a whole thing on Reddit, sim- like, not fully agreeing with you, but believing that his last name is Wesker, not that okay. he's the same dude, but he's one of, like, the 13 children, mm. but the timing on that doesn't work. So like there's been arguments for that because apparently there was an Ethan W who was called who was marked as deceased as one of these kids or something like that. And it's like, what are the odds that now it's Ethan W Winters? Mm. I, I'm not sure. I like I like the idea, but I really want Ethan to continue to be like that everyday dude. Cause that was mm. the thing that was so refreshing about him in the last game. And like he's not really an everyday dude now after everything he's been through, but like, I really still wanted him to be and not be, like, so tied in. It's, like, the Ray Skywalker thing. I'm, like, can't you just be, like, a random human? Do you know what I mean? Why does it have to be this, like, grand tie-in? So I'm, I'm not sure if I don't disagree. I'm just, like, I don't want that to be the case. Lou, do you have uh, any, any opinion on that? Or um, I wanted Ray to be a Skywalker for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think it's worth mentioning for those watching this video uh, that there is still an opportunity for you to play these demos. Um, For the Maiden demo, like I don't have a PS5. I don't know if it's still available on PS5. I think it was a timed thing. So like we all missed out on that. It's fine. You don't play as Ethan. It's kind of like a side situation um, that just fleshes out the vampire backstory. So it's not a big deal if you miss that. But for the demo we just played, the village demo, it becomes available to xbox and everyone else on may 1st um and then this coming saturday april 25th 
um, that is when the castle demo becomes available for people on PlayStation. So if you're on PlayStation, you're going to get another demo. Then May 1st, everyone gets both demos. So you can still play the demos prior to the game coming out if you want to do that. Or, or just buy the game because I think you're going to like If you're watching this video, you'll probably like the game, I think. <laughs> Pre-order it now. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and I'm sure we'll be back to talk about it once again, once uh, we've all completed it. Now, uh, is everyone playing it on normal, casual, hard? What, what, what's uh, everyone choosing? What, whatever was just slightly above the easiest. Okay. That's, that's what I was normal. playing it on. That's yeah. the normal. <laughs> yeah. Normal. I usually do all my first playthroughs normal. I just, yeah. like my thought process, I want to experience the basic game. Just, you know what I mean? Um, so that's usually how I do things, though I will fully admit in the demo, I played my third and final playthrough on casual to see what would happen. Because <laughs> I wanted <laughs> to see how many times I could get hit by the lichen. <laughs> but yeah, I will probably be playing just like normal. And then usually I will go back and play again on a harder mode because there's usually like, different achievements or you get like different weapons when you play it again in a harder yeah. mode. And that's always fun. So that's right. <laughs> Well, with that said, uh, you should all check out the game. And if you like what you saw, uh, please like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, uh, tell us what you think, and uh, we will see you all later. Bye. Bye. Bye.